Hello, everyone. Welcome to All Things College and Career, the podcast to turn to for all of your college and career planning needs with your hosts, Meg Gary and Bobby Ryan. You came to the right place to gather as much information as possible about college and careers before you make any big decisions. We are so glad you are here to learn before before you leap leap each week week with with us. us. If you are considering becoming an accountant, today's episode is for you. It certainly is. We are so excited to interview Anne Hanselman, a certified public accountant. She is a partner and owner of the accounting firm Triano and Hanselman, located in Sanford, Maine, and also has an auxiliary office in Salida, Colorado. In this episode, Anne was incredibly gracious in sharing just what it takes to become a CPA and what it's like to own and operate your own business. Yes, so if you are considering going into the field of accounting, you're going to learn so much from this episode. You definitely will. We so enjoyed our conversation with Anne, and we think you will too. Yep, absolutely. So enough of our introduction. Let's get on to our conversation with Anne. Let's do it. Hello, Anne Hanselman. Welcome to All Things College and Career. Thanks so much for joining us on the podcast today. Happy to be here. Hello, Anne. We are really excited to talk to you today and finding out what it's like to be a CPA. So thanks so much for joining us. You bet. We usually start off by asking our guests what are three things they love about their careers. So if you could share with us three things you love about being a CPA. You bet. So accounting in general is something that always balances out. So I love the structure and the balance, if you will, in being an accountant. So that'd be one. The second thing I really enjoy is the people. And so I get to interact with a diverse you know, number of people, different businesses, mm-hmm. different challenges. So um, you know, I really enjoy the people aspect of being a public accountant. And then the third thing, it, it, kind of similar to the second, is that there's a ton of diversity in the work that I do in terms of the services I provide, the challenges I'm trying to help clients solve. Uh, so every day is different. Uh, yeah. And, you know, brings new things to the table and I'm constantly learning. So it makes it makes it interesting. I think the challenges that you mentioned, I bet there's a lot of emotional challenges because money is an emotional topic. It can be for sure. So I can imagine that the challenges while financial and all that is probably pretty emotional at times as well. It can be. And so mm-hmm. making those connections with people and, and enjoying working with people and helping people is really an important aspect of, of being a public accountant. Yeah, it sounds like you're a problem solver. <laughs> I love that answer because I think yeah. people in general have this vision or image of accountants as being very secluded <laughs> and not interactive with people. Mm. So that kind of just dispelled that whole notion. Absolutely. Yeah. I joke that there's two great myths about accountants. You know, one is that we're really good at doing math in our head, which we're not all good at, <laughs> myself included. <laughs> I, I rely on my 10 yeah. pretty heavily. Um, yeah. And the, the yeah. other is that that, you know, we sit in cubicles and and don't interact with people. And at least Mm. in public accounting, people skills and working with people is probably one of the number one things that we do. That's so interesting. So, Anne, I would like to just dig in a bit and turn back the clock and ask you how it all started and what led you on to this path of becoming ultimately a CPA and a business owner, owning your own accounting firm, actually, too, Mm. if I'm not mistaken. (laughs) And for uh, listeners wondering how to get from maybe a high school student or maybe an older person that's looking to transition, how do they get to where you are? How does it all begin? Well, for me, it began in my high school accounting class. I had a really amazing accounting teacher in my junior year of high school. And, you know, she just made it exciting and, and fun uh, somehow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah teachers I, can make those... all the difference. Yeah, yeah that's for it sure. really does. And, and she, you know, I'm just one of those those maybe odd ducks that decided right at that moment in my first accounting class that this was it. And then for me, it, it stuck. I had I went from Sanford High School to University of Maine, Orono, and they had a fantastic business department. And again, you know, great professors that really shared their passion for accounting and business and just inspired me. And, and one of the biggest things that was helpful for me in college was I had opportunities to do work study. And so I worked with actual accountants and bookkeepers in the Orono, Bangor area and actually did 
real hands-on work, probably my starting my sophomore year of college. That's absolutely so fabulous. That's yeah. So great. Mm-hmm. And that's something I'm seeing as being such a critical part of landing a job or a career is not only the education ingredient, but also the hands-on experience. And the two combined is powerful to get you that job that you're looking for. Absolutely. Yeah. And also just really making sure you like what you're Want doing. To do it. Because yeah. Exactly. What a better time to try it out while you're in college and make sure this is something you really want to do. So that, yeah, that's fantastic. The University of Maine gave you that opportunity. Yeah. And then from there, I chose a slightly different path than saw my interview with some of the really big firms in Portland and other cities. But I ended up heading west to Colorado and found a a really small uh, local firm to work with and, and had an opportunity to literally start at the front desk. So I didn't start as a staff accountant, as some people might in larger accounting firms. I started almost like a receptionist and then into bookkeeping and payroll and and worked my way up from every aspect of that particular firm to the point where I felt really confident having learned really all the aspects of a small accounting office Mm. uh, to then jump into a a partnership with another accountant in that same community. And and so I have an appreciation for all the different positions and kind of levels of, you know, staff it takes to help run an accounting office, which I think was a valuable experience for me. And then I love that. And, you know, now as an owner and running your partner, however, the appropriate way to phrase that (laughs) is partner and owner. (laughs) Partner and owner of both of those businesses, it must give you such insight onto how the different roles and a respect for each of the roles, I'm assuming as well. Absolutely. So what made you go out to Colorado? Just interested. (laughs) Yeah, you know, I followed my college sweetheart out, if I have Ah, to be honest. That will do it. That will do it. (laughs) And it didn't hurt that, you know, it's it's beautiful out there. Oh, gosh, Um, yeah. 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 And so that great outdoors opportunities. So now do you still run that business in or? So I service about 100 clients in Colorado still. So I travel out there, you know, once a year to visit with them face to face and then work remotely the rest of the time. So I still have a client base that I couldn't bear to say goodbye to even though I moved back to my home state of Maine. So in this day and age, it's great. You can work from anywhere. Accountants are probably like your hairdresser or your dentist, you know, you don't want to switch once you get a good one. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. (laughs) Yeah. So it doesn't matter that you're across the country. Yeah, it's that relationship building, you know, that it makes it hard to think about switching. So yeah. Yeah, exactly. And why not? You can do it remotely. So exactly. <laughs> that's another great thing about your career. For sure. So Anne, would you mm-hmm. recommend for any person thinking about going into this as a career to number one, major in accounting in college and number two, to get work experience while in college to make sure it's a good fit for you? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I majored in business administration with a concentration in accounting myself okay. and, and just got a little bit of a broad range of you know business classes, including marketing marketing, which has been helpful. And and when you're in public accounting, depending on the avenue you go, you need to have a pretty broad knowledge base, which that business administration can give you. But certainly getting real hands-on experience with different employers in terms of both public and private accounting opportunities to to give you a sense of the differences between the two and what you might like is just super important and just can make sure that you like the real day-to-day of being an accountant versus just the, Mm -hmm. the book side of being an accountant. So. Right, right. The whole picture. So what about the person, though, that didn't major in accounting? Is it really difficult to become a CPA? Is it a roadblock? It's hard to get over or can you do it? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think that there would be some challenges if you didn't have a heavy accounting background with passing the CPA exam, mm-hmm. which is pretty rigorous. Um, right. So I I don't know that you have to be an accounting major per se, but you would have to have really beefed up on your accounting course load um, in order to pass the the CPA exam. Of course, not all accountants are CPAs, um, but it certainly in this day and age is helpful in terms of having that designation. Uh, And most accountants and most CPAs are also have master degrees these days as well. Oh, is Uh, that right? I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. So, Anne, can you share with our listeners just exactly what's involved in sitting for the CPA? Like, when did you decide to do it and how do you prepare for such an exam? (laughs) And and we all know it's rigorous. So, I mean, congratulations for passing it, I guess, I should say. But yeah, yeah, absolutely. I hate to date myself, but it was so long ago (laughs) that the exam has changed quite a bit. Has Um, it? Yeah. It has. So, we used to joke around that CPA stood for could never pass 
again um, in terms of the <laughs> test. So it kind of one of those things you, you really study hard for. And I'm not sure that I could pass it if I took oh, it today. Oh my without. gosh. <laughs> it's very I, I specific. But no, in terms of the exam, you know, I, my recommendation for our younger folks looking to get their CPA designation would be to take it as soon out of college as they can um, because yes, well, things, know, things are, are so fresh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And our professors also helped us kind of target areas that they knew would be on the CPA exam. There's some amazing study materials out there. So my employer in Colorado that I worked for was really supportive, which is helpful and allowed me to take time in my workday to study rigorously. Wow. And so I was able to take a lot of time to study and prepare. And the exam itself is broken up into parts now. And it, it used to be you sat for the entire exam in two day setting and basically hit it all at one time. Now you can do it in pieces within a couple year time frame. I think it is. Oh, so it is no, different. That sounds now. much more achievable. Yeah. It's a little more doable, I think. Yeah. Um, but certainly still rigorous. Do you know how many sections are involved, Dan? I believe there are still four sections okay. um, mm-hmm. to the exam. So can you touch just briefly on what the difference between public and private accounting is? Absolutely. So when we think about private accounting, generally we're working for one company. I might be working at a desk for one company and generally I might be doing one aspect of their larger accounting function. So I might be in accounts payable and all I do is pay bills. Um, right. Or I'm an accountant on their team that handles various tasks, but for one company. So private accounting is typically where I, I have a specialty or I'm with one company the majority of the time providing their in-house accounting services. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Whereas public accounting is providing services to the public um, and a more various folks and diverse businesses. And generally, public accountants are either in the tax field, which is my specialty, or they're in auditing. And so public accountants are the folks that do audits of people's financial statements. And so generally, public accountants take either that path of tax or audit. You went tax, so I did working on people's taxes, basically, or businesses' taxes. Taxes. Yeah, that's interesting. Yes. Yeah. I never knew the difference. I always just assumed the public no. accountant worked for public entities like the government or things like yeah. that. So right, right. I think a public accountant would be. I don't know. I like that idea. It sounds more social. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. It is actually. It is. <laughs> and you know, if anybody's that, asking my opinion, yeah, right. That's what I and, would go and a for. Lot of, a lot of CPAs work in private accounting. Um, so it's not to say that we don't want to get our CPA designation if we're going into private accounting. It, it's still a valuable designation to have and license to have, but it's just a decision as to whether I'm in private accounting or public accounting with right. my CPA designation. Yeah, I did yeah. have one more quick question about the CPA. So it's not necessary to have any work experience before you can sit for the exam. You can take it directly out of college. You can sit for the exam, but in order to actually complete your license, and states vary in their rules, so that's mm-hmm. important to mention. Check with your state. Yeah, you, yeah, you have to check with your state licensing mm-hmm. and, and make sure you follow their requirements. Many states do require back in my day, in fact, required, I think it was 2000, you know, I, I actually can't quite remember, they required work under another licensed CPA. Okay. And so I had mm-hmm. to work for a CPA firm for a certain number of hours that later changed to be replaced by if you have a master's degree, that can replace work oh, experience. Oh, that probably explains so, why so many people have their master's why, degree. Yeah, why? Yeah. Right. right yeah. Yeah. I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. Because depending on the state, those hours could add up to a lot of hours potentially Correct. too. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So how long were you working before you decided to sit for the exam? So I did take the exam twice. So don't hold that against me. <laughs> no, <laughs> <course I'm> not. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I took it um, the first time almost immediately out of college while I had very little work experience for a, a public account. And I'd been doing that work through college. But I thought I'd just give it a shot right away. Mm-hmm. Um, frankly, yep. probably didn't put in enough specific study time. I was hoping that just my college years would get me through and it, it didn't quite work that way. So then I had to amp up my study time yeah, and (laughs) efforts. And then I think I waited just another year. And at that time, they only offered the exam twice a year. Again, that's changed now where you can take it with much more flexibility. But at the time, you could only take it. There were only two times a year you could even take the exam. So I waited till like the following year to retest. Yeah. But no, that's good for our listeners to hear. I mean, it takes a lot of effort if you probably want to pass it on that first time. And but don't get discouraged because you can take it again. Exactly. 
exactly. I'm curious what the pass rate is. It sounds like it's pretty yeah. low. <laughs> you, yeah, I don't know that information, to be honest. But yeah. <laughs> I yeah. wasn't alone and, and not passing the first no, time. No, I'm when sure you were not. Me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you were not, for sure. So, Anne, could you share with our listeners that are thinking about going into accounting as a field, uh, what a typical day is like? Well, as I mentioned earlier, there isn't necessarily a typical, typical day. day. Um, yeah. but, but I guess um, in terms of some of the, the normal things, you know, in the world we live in currently, a lot of it is responding to client emails with quick questions that can be answered via email. It's a lot of chatting with clients about, in my case, their change in tax picture, tax strategy. So lots of little quick communications with clients. And then my schedule varies quite a bit because I have a seasonal, you know, the, the tax industry is really seasonal. So yeah. you know, during, <laughs> during tax season, one day might be meeting with 24 clients to go over their tax documents wow. and questions wow. that they have. That's a lot in a day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, the next day wow. might be trying to get 15 hours of work done to get some tax returns actually out the door. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, And that day might be kind of you're kind of doing return after return, but everyone is a little bit different from the one before it kind of thing. So still diverse. And then this time of year, I do a little bit more consulting and do things like QuickBooks training. QuickBooks is just a Counting simple software. to use accounting yeah. software that probably the majority of small businesses use these days. And mm-hmm. so I'll do training and consulting on, you know, kind of big picture business things. And then a lot of we're heading into now tax planning season where people are gearing up for the end of the year. And, you know, we're taking a look at how the year has gone and what it means to them tax wise and anything that they should do before the end of the year. So, yeah. um, Well, I love that. I love how you got creative on offsetting the busy time of year with things like consulting. And yeah, it makes a lot of sense. So that's something other CPAs could think about or future CPAs. I'm just curious, what exactly do you consider tax season? Is it like January? first to April 15th? Or is it longer than that or shorter? Yeah, great question. So really, I would say that we're in the heat of tax season from February 15th to April 15th. Okay, that's when it's really, really crazy. Yeah, you don't get most of your tax documents till that, you know, January 31st that's true. Is when most that's people true. receive them. Yeah. Right. So yeah, it's, yeah. it's really a, it's a short couple of months, but it's it's intense. It does take a certain personality to put in some really big hours in those mm-hmm. those couple months of the year, no question. I mean, for people that live in Maine, it's a great time to be busy because <laughs> to be inside. Yeah, what else are you going to do? Exactly. I was thinking the same not thing. The fall or summer, you yeah. Know? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It's very timely. I was also thinking, does your husband and family just basically say, all right, listen, don't talk to mom (laughs) during February, March, and April? What does that look like for you, Anne? Yeah, Yeah, right. Are they like, all right, give her a big space, wipe her? Well, my family is very supportive, of course, and they're used to it, so they don't really know any different. (laughs) Right. Yeah, right. right. I've always kind of disappeared for a couple months of the year, and then we just, uh, do the best we can with with what time we have, and luckily they're all skiers, and so oh perfect they, they take go off, off and do a lot of skiing <laughs> while I work, and and nobody feels yeah. bad. So that's good. Oh, yeah, it's that's a win a win for everybody. <laughs> It really is. It really is. So what's like something that is a pet peeve of yours for people that come in with their taxes? Is it the person that brings in all their receipts in a (laughs) shoebox? You know, it's actually, that's a fun question to ask. And it's a funny thing that people don't realize. Um, Well, there's two. Can I share two? Of course. (laughs) Sure. Share as many as you want. Right. So one is, uh, please don't staple documents together. (laughs) So right. And it comes out of kindness, right? People are trying to be really helpful and stapling documents together that they believe should be attached. But we're paperless at our firm, and so everything gets scanned. And so our poor right. administrative staff have to take out, you Pull know, out copious staples. amounts of staples. Oh, <laughs> wow. gosh. Wow. Yeah. And so right, so it's, a, it's a silly <laughs> thing. It's a silly thing. But yeah. Um, yeah. And then I, I hate to say it's a pet peeve because I'm not sure that's the right description, but we kind of mm-hmm. giggle. And again, it comes out of a really good place. I mean, our clients are well-intentioned. So we get clients that will really very fastidiously label documents that they give us. And it's really mm-hmm. kind of cute, but you know, you'll, they'll put a sticky note. This is, this is my W-2. This is my interest <laughs> statement. This I'm is probably my, guilty again, of that. <laughs> 
<laughs> but obviously you recognize yeah, no, it sounds <laughs> like you yeah i think i did but, yeah. but you recognize yeah. every document you don't need that note i'm assuming we, we yeah. i i promise to all my clients that i know what a w2 looks like <laughs> it looks like yeah I'm pretty sure i'm at pretty this sure point, i don't yeah. write that but maybe like this is my home mortgage <laughs> this is a business mortgage that kind of thing just to distinguish but yeah. you yeah. yeah 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 so but you people don't you know and they don't have to do that so not a pet peeve we just kind of giggle you know that folks are yeah, trying to identify yeah. things for us right <laughs> Right. Oh, that's so that. funny. Yeah. Sure, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure I've seen a 1099 before. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, right. right. So do you have to educate yourself every year because of tax laws change? There must be a learning process you have to go through because pretty much the tax laws tend to change oh my seemingly gosh. every yeah, year. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. I mean, our every state requires a certain number of continuing education hours. Oh, okay. You know, no matter what, I, I think mine are 80, but I, you know, I do 80 to 100 hours of continuing education a year. Wow. Um, wow. wow. And yeah. of course in 2018 we had the most dramatic tax change we've right. had yes. since I've ever, since I've been in tax accounting and so there's a ton of um you must have had a million emails and absolutely and, and, it, and it made yeah. it actually to be a stressful tax season because people's tax picture changed really dramatically this past filing season but no and that's a, that's part of the fun though in that our business yeah. is always changing a little bit you're always right. learning you're new bored. stuff you don't get bored and so I, I do think that that's part of the fun of being a tax accountant is that things keep changing and, and you have to stay on top of that would you say you have to be really good at reading documents to me it's dry reading or if I'm reading like tax code. But when you say continue education, are you having to read through the documents yourself? Or do you take a class or online course that kind of just updates you with the new tax code? How do you, yeah. how do no, you so approach I, that learning? <laughs> so there's all different. Yeah, there, there's all kinds of different approaches to continuing education. The most fun is, you know, of course, you take in person from a really good instructor, you know, yeah. and that can be pretty scintillating, actually, and, and, mm, and fun sure. to go back and forth with questions and examples. That's not always feasible from a cost or travel perspective. So, you know, they also have great webinars online, which I do. And then I also do some of the read and then multiple choice type continuing education, which is my least favorite from a fun mm. standpoint, but you can right. get some really great information and, you know, continuing education, like anything, I think tries to make the information as digestible as possible. So yes, generally continuing great. education yeah. isn't, you know, tough to read, even though reading the IRS code section behind it could be a little bit more challenging, but yeah, well, I think you have to have a certain mind for that. My husband's great at reading through documents and he doesn't miss a trick. I'm a skimmer, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what? Where did it say that? <laughs> I'm definitely a skimmer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Anyways, I'm thankful he reads well. Yeah. Reads those he does. well. Anyway. So, Ian, could you talk a little bit about what it's like to run your own business? For anybody interested in heading down that path as you have, what would you say are the advantages and drawbacks? And what does that look like managing and operating? and running your own business? So I think that it does take a certain personality. I, I don't think that we're all cut out to be business owners. You don't get to step away from it when you're a business owner in terms of, yeah. you know, there's no clocking in and out. So um, it can be yeah. tough to set boundaries and carve out personal time that uh, you try to separate from your business life. But if something comes up, it certainly falls back to you, whether that's, you know, the internet's not working or the toilet's clogged or <laughs> yeah, right, there's right. a client emergency. Things that you, know, you would not even end. think about. Yeah. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. You're wearing you, a you lot of to hats. Be there. Right. Yeah. And, and, you know, in the end, if a mistake mistake happens um, because we're all human and that sometimes happens regardless of how it may have happened you know you have to be the person that accepts responsibility for it and, mm. and handles how to fix it so that can be stressful at times but you know I for me the challenges don't far outweigh the benefits of you know having a, a certain vision for an accounting firm and what I want it to look like and what I want my personal career to look like and how that integrates with my personal life and then being able to create something that lines up with, with those visions and then you know so that kind of benefit that challenges pulling yourself back and reassessing if you're still doing what you set out to do originally. And, and that's, you know, for any business owner, I think a constant battle that, that we have to do is check in and make sure we're still accomplishing our right. original goals. But um, and flexibility, you know, I, I'm a mom of three kiddos, and I've really yeah. been lucky to be able to set my own schedule and sneak out for my kids athletic events. Sure. And, right. Yeah, her daughter has her last cross country meet today, right? So we'll, yes, we'll yes, say a little 
cheer excited. for her. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Run fast. So <laughs> yeah. exactly. So for me, I, and I think as a business owner or even in anything we do, we always have to weigh out the ups and downs and make sure that there's more benefits than downsides. And for me, being self-employed and having my own firm has definitely worked, but I feel grateful for that. It, that's not the case for everybody. So you just have to figure out what works for you. And I'm also really lucky to have found a business partner in both the firms. So I had one in Colorado and one here in Maine, but a business partner that was an extremely good fit and that we balanced each other out. And yeah, that's um, so yeah, huge I'm because very it's, grateful for that. It's almost like your business marriage, so to speak. So oh, it's yeah, so absolutely. important to have a good <laughs> partnership that way. That is very fortunate. Yes. I love that though. That was a really good synopsis of the pluses and minuses. And uh, definitely I can see the advantages. And one big thing as a CPA, you don't have to worry about finding somebody to do your taxes. taxes right. Is, <laughs> yeah. And that's such an yeah. important ingredient. You know, having all that information that must help to make your business so much more successful than for the rest of us that don't have that skill set. Right. Yeah. It, yeah. It definitely helps. Although I will tell you that I have engaged another CPA to help me be strategic about my business and look at my own numbers and give me their perspective and outside opinions. So oh, although wow. I'm a CPA, you know, much like a doctor would see uh, their own physician, you know, right. I still check in with other CPAs Not a bad to idea. get feedback. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Because yeah. That's a great idea. Just having a different set of eyes or a perspective or somebody that's not so embedded that you can't step back and see the picture clearly sometimes. Exactly right. Exactly right. So what would you say is the most challenging aspect about being a CPA? Like what part of your job is most challenging when you're doing someone's taxes? Yeah. So from a logistical standpoint, you know, just the sheer volume of work that needs to be completed in such a very short uh, amount of time can be challenging. Yeah. During tax so, season, yep. Yeah, and there's just no way to get around the fact that we're working 80 to 90 hours a week. Wow. That just is what it is in my particular business. And there may be other firms that don't quite, you know, I think that's on the higher end. Uh, it, that might be a somewhat because of the structure of our small firm, but a right. lot of hours, a lot to get done a short amount of time. And then from a an emotional or, or people standpoint, one of the hardest things is breaking the news to somebody about a, a tax bill that yeah. whether it's $50 yeah. or 5,000, you know, uh, that might be painful for them personally, and then uh-huh, trying to yeah. help explain why it is and and how we can be more in front of it in the future. But that's always a part of the job. It's hard, especially because we care and, and we tend to feel badly yeah. when that's the case. So Yeah, um, I'm sure. Yeah. Right. But and on the other flip side of that, when you get a bigger return than someone expects, they must want to hug you. Thank you. <laughs> I try Thank not you. to yeah. take credit for that either. So. Uh, right. You're not, you're right. You're not to blame for the payment, but you can't yeah. take credit for that. But yeah. yeah, I'm sure. I want to change directions just for a second here and ask if you don't mind talking a, a bit about your work with the Sanford Backpack Program, which fights food insecurity. And from what I can tell, you've been very involved in that organization. So would you mind just talking about that a bit? No, not at all. Um, that's that's been a program I've been really passionate about for, oh gosh, almost 10 years now. In our community, more than 50% of our uh, students are benefiting from the free and reduced meal program during school. But yes. of course, they don't have access to that food when uh, the weekend rolls around. And so when my kiddos were young, I was pretty involved in their school and got to know their principal and, and teacher. And she pulled me aside one day and explained how there was this one small program at our junior high and town where this amazing school nurse was helping give food out to kiddos at the junior high and how she had borrowed some food from the junior high to give to some of our kiddos at our school because they weren't eating over the weekend. They were coming to school Monday with aching bellies and and headaches Mm. and not being able to focus all day Monday because frankly, they were just hungry. And so- yeah. Yeah. I just thought, how is this possible? You know? And so 10 years later, we've developed a board um, for our program. We've expanded it so that we're distributing backpacks at all six of our Sanford schools. So pre K. That's um, awesome. Actually, seven. We just added Sanford Adult Ed. So we're distributing food from pre K through adult education and and also doing produce distributions. And really, just I'm a believer that when youth aren't getting their basic needs, being met, whether it's uh, food or clothing or homes or some of those other emotional aspects, it's really hard to focus on learning. And so right. helping get food out to youth 
was something that I could put a lot of energy behind. And really what the kiddos see and what I've seen as I'm handing apples over to a kiddo at a food distribution is not only are they getting some food, but they realize somebody cares. Yeah. And so yeah. for me, that's that's really awesome. Yeah. Like these kids go, wow, somebody noticed I was hungry and they're yeah. doing something about it. And I believe that will come full circle and that will help kiddos be better educated and, and at a society overall. Themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. maybe yeah, someday absolutely. they'll pay for it. But oh, that's oh, I, yeah. I love that in such a thank great Thank you for doing that. Yeah. Thank, yeah. Thank you. And what a great program to get behind. And anybody mm-hmm. listening that would like to show some support, we'll include that link in the show notes. Um, Perfect. Thank you. We are keeping an eye on the clock so that we can okay. get to that cross country meet. Exactly right. I was going to ask you if anybody hits you up on the sidelines for accounting advice. <laughs> <laughs> once in a while, once in a while, but I try not to, I'm very cognitive of confidentiality. So I try not to do too yeah. much chatting right. out in public. No, yeah. <laughs> Right. Give, yeah. me a, give me a call later. Yeah, right. I exactly. actually did want to quickly ask her Go about ahead, that. Man. Yeah. So for example, in medicine, there's HIPAA violations. And mm-hmm. if you work in a medical office, there's penalties if you disclose any information under the HIPAA rules. So is there a similar system in accounting? Absolutely. Yeah. Very clear guidance in our professional code of ethics as part of our licensing that require confidentiality, how we put ourselves out to the public, numerous things that we have to uphold as part of our profession. And confidentiality is a a really big one. Yeah. That's going to be reassuring to people to know when they're turning over their most personal information that it's kept in confidence. Oh, I hope so. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Makes good sense. Okay. Well, on to the rapid fire questions. There's only 10, so don't be too. (laughs) I'm nervous now. What is your rapid fire? (laughs) (laughs) I don't know why we call them rapid fire. I don't know how rapid we are. (laughs) Anyway. All right. And if you weren't doing what you were doing now as a career, Career, what would you be doing? Uh, that's a great question. You know, I think that if I were doing something else, I have a passion for writing. And so if I could find something interesting enough to write about, I would love to to be a writer in another life. <laughs> so yeah. Would it be a fiction or nonfiction writer? Yeah, you know, I, I probably Either. fiction, no, probably more fiction, but mm-hmm. based loosely on, you yeah. know, real life things. But um, yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah not that's like, my favorite maybe type like of adventure fiction, fiction or something. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Right. But right. Okay. That sounds great. Well, hey, you never know. Right? Could be out there sometime. All right. Would you rather pick up the phone or send an email? Oh, it depends who I'm communicating with. <laughs> yeah, <exactly>. <laughs> <laughs> um, in my job, it's been really important to keep good records and paper trails. So sometimes sure. if I want to add it to a file, I'll shoot an email out and that way I can throw it in the file and have a record of the communication. So that sometimes in this day and that, age is my first preference. Yeah, sure. Okay. Best vacation you had and tell us about uh, it. <laughs> we were so lucky to be able to go to the Philippines, which is where my dad mm. immigrated from when he was 16. And so so we took the whole family, my dad and my stepmom, oh, nice. my siblings, and I all went to the Philippines on a, a oh, my gosh. vacation wow. together that was just uh, an amazing experience. We all got along somehow, uh, visited, <laughs> you know, places my dad's told us a lot about and met oh, family. And that's so wonderful. I was just going to say, you must have met some family we there. Did. Yeah, we did. fabulous. Very amazing. And your dad must have been so excited to share that. He was. It meant know, a lot. With everyone. It meant a lot. Yeah. Mm. Uh, that's awesome. Oh my gosh, I want to go on that trip. <laughs> it was pretty amazing. <laughs> yes, exactly. What did your kids think, Anne? They were excited. You know, they were surprised by the level of poverty that exists in the Philippines and, and mm. how people make the best of, of living in poverty in a lot of instances. But they also enjoyed, you know, we, we were lucky enough to be able to visit resort areas and do sightseeing. And, you know, they, they right. love the warm beaches and the amazing variety of um, fish in the water and the different culture. I, I was a little sad, I'll admit, because uh, where we stayed, the family tried to spoil us and they made a lot of American food. So I had kept oh, telling the kids, we're yeah, going to eat yeah, fish like, for yeah. breakfast no, no, no. and fish right. for lunch. Yeah. And they were prepared for a lot of Filipino cuisine. And in fact, you know, they got out hot dogs and um, <laughs> they were trying to... Oh, no. Oh, try to no. Said, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. This is a bad thing. No, yeah. no, we, yeah. Oh, that's so yeah. funny. But they're trying to be so accommodating that they were sweet yeah. at the same time. But it was a, a great, yeah, great sweet. exposure to, you know, different cultures and and, oh, um, for sure. Yeah, what a amazing. great education. For sure. Absolutely. Okay. Least favorite chore. Oh, you know, I hate unpacking groceries for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I'll grocery shop, but I, I just don't like to unpack Oh my gosh, them. <laughs> I'm that way with putting away the laundry. I don't mind doing oh, yeah. laundry, but yep. just uh, putting, it away. putting it away. So kind of the same thing. Exactly. All right, a food you could not live without. Chocolate cake. <laughs> That's <an easy> one. <laughs> oh my gosh. There was no hesitation in that yeah. people. Yeah. <laughs> No, and anybody cake. who knows me would, would laugh because that's a, a very right. easy answer. For me. <laughs> right. no I would say chocolate. Chocolate in general. general. Yeah. 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 Any kind yeah. of chocolate. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Mm. What do you do to de-stress? Oh, you know, I'm trying to get better at finding tools to de-stress, but mm -hmm. uh, getting outside and moving in some fashion yeah. uh, is, is always good for taking stress out. And the other big one for me is hanging out with my family and focusing on them and not all the to-do lists running through my mind. Yes. So, yeah. um, when and that's I can hard to do sometimes, you know, yeah, to, to shut that list try off. Try to be present at yeah. a moment, enjoy them. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And turning yep. the phone off, you know, so you don't hear texts or emails come through yeah. um, as part of that is a big one. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Name something on your bucket list if you have one. Yeah. You know, I don't actually have a bucket list per se. Okay. I think that, you know, yeah, that's a good one. I know. I don't have one written down. Down. I have a notional one going on in my head. <laughs> <laughs> you <may go. laughs> That's okay. You could take a pass on that. Do you have a green thumb? You know, I like halfway. Um, <laughs> I dabble with, you know, doing the gardening. I'm the official landscaper or, or you know, I do the lawn mowing for the family and the wow, garden work. Big job. And, um, mm -hmm. It is, but I find it's great because when the kids were little, you know, it was the only time you could get quiet was you're your lawn mowing. <laughs> <Right. laughs> Uh, you can't hear phones ringing. You can kind of pretend you True. can hear the kids yelling your name. And it's right. pretty um, good right. exercise, oh, too, too, right? Yeah. <laughs> and you're outside. Yeah. yeah so I took Amazing. that on early in our family life. But no, so I, yeah, I, I have some fun. I find it's a nice way to be outside and, and feel productive. So, yeah. um, but I, I definitely am not garden show quality or anything like that. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> definitely not. Well, this is my thing. Like if I have a plant in the house, it's living a short life. <laughs> okay. Good to know. <laughs> definitely not a great thought. All right. Um, favorite day of the week. You know, I feel like Fridays are just fun for some reason, you know, before the anticipation of the weekend, the accomplishments of getting through your week. Uh, so right. I say Friday is a fun one. Yeah, that's a popular one. That's a good one for me, too. Yeah. All right. TV show or movie you would recommend? I'm such a TV series fanatic. So picking one is hard. OK, this is for our own personal <laughs> yeah, list. Yeah, put Megan, it on I, your this is Megan, I like to ask this question. Serving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So it's a little bit older school. There's two that I really love and I actually circle back to watching them again and they're just kind of light, fluffy shows. But I like Parenthood and yes. then um, Brothers and Sisters. Oh my gosh, I love both of those. Those are both like family dramas. I just love those. Yeah, so they're just easy, kind of light, yeah. <laughs> easy breezy. Yeah, yeah I exactly. like those too. All right, Anne, well, you made it through the rapid fire questions oh, like a phew. pro. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much for coming on, Anne, and sharing with oh, all course. our listeners what it takes to become a CPA and business owner. And I'm sure this has been super valuable to anybody considering a career in accounting. So thanks so much. Or business, I guess. We could add that Great. in. Yeah. Good. But Glad yeah. <laughs> thanks for coming on. And wish your daughter good luck in the cross-country meet today. I we'll will. I'm going to go her. yell really loud out there. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Absolutely. It's all a right. perfect day for it. And I just wanted to say that we feel privileged to learning about people's careers. It's just so fascinating each and every time to find out the details of everyone's careers. So thanks for sharing yours. Oh, you're so welcome. Have a great day. Yeah, you too. Have a great day. Have a great day, Anne. What an informative interview that was. Oh my gosh, absolutely. And changed our entire perspective about what the field of accounting is like. It's much more social than one would expect. It requires a lot of interaction with the community and business owners. I know, right? And I also learned how much variety there is in her work depending on the time of year. I think Anne did a really great job of dispelling a lot of notions surrounding the field of accountant. Yeah, like boring, stuffy, right. So definitely. Yeah. Anne's none of those. And thank you. Thank you, Anne. 
Pam, for coming on and providing such great information to our listeners. Yes, we certainly appreciate it. And we also appreciate all of you for listening. Thanks so much for tuning in. Yes, thank you. We're putting countless hours and expense into producing this free podcast to help our listeners research careers and colleges. You could really help us out by subscribing to the podcast and giving us a rating and review. You sure could. It only takes a minute and it really helps us out and it helps others to find our show. Mm -hmm. Also sharing this podcast with friends or family that might be interested or posting an episode that you like on social media also really helps us out. It sure does. Thanks again, everyone, for listening. Yep. Thanks again. Have a great day, y'all.